Born Eric Weiss on March 24th, 1874. Harry Houdini was to this day the most famous magician of all time. Houdini's family emigrated from Budapest, Hungary to Appleton, Wisconsin just days after his birth on April 6th, 1874. Harry's father, Mayor Samuel Weiss, was a rabbi for the Zion Reform Congregation. Harry's mother, Cecilia Steiner, gave birth to seven children, six boys and one girl. Harry was the third child. Houdini held a deep devotion for his mother that neared obsession. She may have been his first audience. To ease her burdens, young Eric Weiss took to the street begging for coins. He would hide the coins in his clothing and in his mop of thick black hair. Once home, he told his mother, Shake me! I'm magic! And when she did, the coins would tumble from their hiding places. At age 17, while working in a necktie cutting factory, Eric developed an interest in locks and lock picking, a hobby turned vocation that would transform the young man's life. After reading the memoirs of Robert Houdin, Weiss was so impressed that he quit his job and joined the circus. The young Eric Weiss changed his stage name to Harry Houdini in tribute to his idol. In 1895, Houdini thought up the idea that led to his ultimate fame. Instead of escaping from his own handcuffs, he dared local police to handcuff him with theirs. The free publicity generated from his successful escapes skyrocketed Houdini's popularity and provided the young couple with the opportunities to tour both the United States and the world. By the year 1900, Houdini achieved world recognition after performing in London where he demonstrated his skill in setting himself free from every type of confinement. Straitjackets, handcuffs, shackles, even while submerged in water or suspended in midair. He made every escape attempt a heart-stopping, death-defying feat by prolonging his releases to a point where the audience believed that his death was imminent. On October 22, 1926, at the Princess Theatre in Montreal, Houdini invited some college students to join him backstage. Proud of his muscular physique, Houdini often challenged others to punch him in the stomach. Some accounts say only that it was a student that took Houdini's challenge, and others indicate that the student was a McGill University boxing star. One account names J. Gordon Whitehead, an amateur boxer, as the person who punched Houdini and relates that Houdini sustained not one, but three blows from Whitehead. The Whitehead account states that the boxer punched Houdini as he was rising from sitting on the couch. Others report only that Houdini wasn't prepared to take the punch. Accounts also vary about the outcome. The punch either aggravated a pre-existing appendix problem or caused Houdini's appendix to rupture. Whatever the details, the incident resulted in peritonitis caused by a ruptured appendix, which led to Houdini's death. Houdini suffered through four more performances in Montreal. On October 24th, he opened at Detroit's Garrick Theater. He completed a series of vanishing acts, the last one where he made a woman disappear from the stage and a flowering bush appear in her place. Moments later, the woman shouted, Here I am! as she ran down the aisle from the back of the theater. As Houdini began his next trick, the pain from his midsection caused him to turn aside. He completed the first act with the help of his assistants. As the curtain fell, Houdini collapsed and was taken to his dressing room. Although he had a 104 degree fever, he was determined to finish the two and a half hour show. After the show, Houdini was rushed to Grace Hospital in Detroit, Michigan. Doctors removed his appendix, but the infection had already poisoned his system. Most accounts say that the magician died on October 31st in the arms of his wife. Every year for 10 years after his death, a seance was conducted by his wife and many magicians to see if he could contact them from the beyond. His devotees carried on the annual seance for decades afterwards. Here is an excerpt from the last seance that his wife attended. Mrs. Houdini, the zero hour has passed. The ten years are up. Have you reached a decision? Yes. Houdini did not come through. My last hope is gone. I do not believe that Houdini can come back to me or to anyone. 
after faithfully following through the 10-year Houdini compact, using every type, medium, and theory, it is now my personal and positive belief that spirit communication in any form is impossible. I do not believe that ghosts or spirits exist. The Houdini Shrine has burned for 10 years. I now reverently turn out the light. It is finished. Good night, Harry. Even though there was no proof that Harry Houdini could or could not escape the great beyond, he will always remain the greatest escape artist of all time. <laughs>